Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to reducing power consumption on Arduino Zero, Arduino Maker 1000, or any SAM D21 based Arduino. And this is going to be part one in a either a two or three part series. And the reason is, is because there's a lot of different ways to save power or reduce power consumption on the SAM D21 chip. And like I mentioned, this is found on the Zero, it's found on the Maker 1000. There are some other boards made by other manufacturers that have it on there. I'm gonna use the Maker 1000 in this example because it has less, I'll say, components around the SAM chip, so it doesn't, those components are gonna suck some of the current out, so the Zero has a lot of those components, so we'll be working with the Maker 1000, but everything we, we show here will work on the Zero as well. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, what will we cover in part one? So in part one, we'll do an overview of the different power save modes or sleep modes or whatever you wanna call them. Then we'll show an example, and this is, you know, 80 or 70%. If you, if you want to save power, this is probably the best way, putting it to sleep and how to wake it up. So if we can put it to sleep, it draws very little current, and then we can wake it up. We can use a, a timer to wake it up from an alarm using the real-time clock, or we can use an external pin, you know, a digital signal or rising edge on an external pin to wake it up. And we'll show both of those examples in this video. Now you can wake it up a bunch of other ways too as well, but those are the two examples we're gonna use in this video. What's nice too is those features are supported by Arduino libraries, so you don't have to get down to the register level for these features that I'm gonna show you. But I will do a little peek under the hood and kind of show you how if we change a certain clock we're using in the, the current real-time clock library, we can actually save a little more power. Okay, SAMD21 sleep modes. So basically there's four of them. I mean, there's two, but one of them has three levels. So you have standby mode. This is the biggest power saving mode. So it, can t it turns everything off except for a low power internal 32 point something something kilohertz clock. So that's the only thing that stays on. It also keeps its internal regulator on, but it goes into low power mode. The standby mode is what we're gonna show in our example. This is the best way to save power. Now, like I said, it turns everything off. So if you want a certain module to stay on and you want that module to wake the chip up, you have to specify, you have to tell that module to stay on in standby mode. So once again, standby mode turns everything off, but you can choose which modules to leave on by specifying that before you go to sleep. Then the idle mode basically doesn't you know, save as much power and it keeps certain things on depending on which idle mode you use you know, that'll depend on what it keeps on. So I'm not gonna go too much in the idle modes here now. I might talk to talk about them in a later video. Okay, here I pulled this from an application note that shows some of the uh, different peripherals while they're in standby or sleep mode. And if you keep them on, this is the current they'll draw. So remember how I said standby mode turns everything off. Well, you can specify things to leave on, and typically you specify something to leave on that's gonna trigger the chip to wake up when it needs to. That might be an ADC level, it might be spy communication, it might be an external interrupt, that's what EIC stands for. And what they're doing here is they're so saying, if you keep this module on, or this peripheral, here's how much current the uh, SAMD21 will draw when it's asleep. So notice this is in microamps, so these are pretty small current levels. Now when we look at the example with the Maker 1000, we won't see this low of levels, and the reason is is because you have other chips and pull-up resistors and things like that around the SAMD21. But these are essentially, if we were just looking at the current for the SAMD21, these would be the current levels we would expect. Now notice this caveat. So if, you know, I'm used to working with the AVR chips in the past, and I've been ramping up more and more with the SAMD21, and this is so much more flexible and a lot more feature risk than the AVR ch chips. And this is one example is it has all these different built-in clocks. So you have the external clock, you have an external uh, 32 kilohertz clock, you have an internal 32 kilohertz clock, you have internal eight megahertz clock. So you have all these clocks and you can pick where, which module you wanna use for that clock. So what they're saying here is these are the clocks used for these measurements. And one thing to point out is some of these clocks use more power than others. So for instance, when we look at an example, the library uses this, the external 32 kilohertz clock for the real-time clock timing. We're gonna actually 
show an example where we switch it to this one. This is the internal 32 kilohertz clock that's actually lower power. Now what you're sacrificing though is accuracy. But the, the important thing I want you to remember is you can route these clocks to any peripheral you want and the clocks themselves draw different levels of power. Okay, now let's look at the code for the examples we're gonna show. And so we're gonna look at a code on how to wake up Arduino from real time, from the real time clock, and also how, how to wake it up from an external event using an interrupt on an external pin. Okay, here we are with our code. First thing we wanna do is call in the real time clock library. Notice it says zero, but it'll work on any of the SAMD chips like the Maker 1000. Notice that I have this one commented out. This is, was a local version I made with the a slight change that I'll show in a second. And by the way, I'll put this code on my blog so you can access it. I create my real-time clock object. These variables basically are variables to set up the real-time clock. So you have day, month, year, and you have times. I'm just using zero seconds because I don't really care what I set the time to. In my setup code, I delay for, for five seconds. Uh, one thing I want to say with the Maker 1000, and this isn't as big a problem with the zero, but with the Maker 1000, be careful that you don't put it to sleep right away and have no way to wake it up. Because if you do that, you're going to have trouble programming that board later on. Because it will not wake up from, from the serial programmer. So if you put it to sleep and you have no way to wake it up, you may have to reprogram it. So if you're playing with sleep modes that end up putting the chip to sleep or you're worried you might put the chip to sleep without a way to wake it up, Make sure you have a long delay in the beginning so you can use that delay to get the chip programmed. So I set up the digital LED pin for low so the LED is off, we'll turn it on later. I start up the real-time clock. I uh, set the time as well as the day, month, year. I then set the alarm. So notice that I set the time to 0000. zero, 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 zero. Here I'm setting the second part to 10 seconds. So basically it's gonna go off if, after 10 seconds of going to sleep or after 10 seconds of the real-time clock starting. I then enable the alarm, so I have to actually enable the alarm, and then I attach the interrupt. So I enable the alarm, attach the interrupt, and if you're not familiar with interrupts, I have videos on interrupts, but basically the function that's gonna get called, I call it ISR for interrupt service routine. So once the interrupt happens, this function, which is down below, I'll show it in a second, will be called. And once the interrupt happens, of course, it'll wake the chip up from sleep. Notice this function right here. I have it great, commented out. This is if you want to use an external interrupt. So instead of using the alarm, you want to use an external pin to wake it up. You'll call this function, and I have it commented out now, but if you wanted to use an external interrupt, you would comment this out these two lines like I, I note up here in the comments and you would uncomment this line to use the external interrupt. And notice I'm feeding in A1 to that so I'm using A1 as the external interrupt and we'll show an example of that. Then this is where we're actually put to sleep is when we call the real-time clock standby mode. That puts it to sleep. Now I have another function here commented out. This actually shows what's going on under the hood uh, for the standby mode which I'll show in a second. So what happens is we set up the real-time clock. If we're using it as our wake-up source, we then set the alarm and attach the interrupt. If we're using the external pin as our interrupt source, we then use this function. We then go to sleep. And then in the loop, we do nothing. So once we go to sleep, the code stops here until we wake up from the interrupt. After that, we stay awake and we just loop in the function. Now, if we go further down, here's our interrupt service routine. So ISR, this is called once the alarm goes off or if we're using the external pin, the external pin level goes low. This is called, and what this does is just, just turns on the LED. Here is the external interrupt function. So you feed in the pin, and what's nice about the SAMD21 is, compared to some of the AVR chips, is you can use almost any pin as an interrupt pin. I'm gonna use pin A1. So here with pin mode, I set to an internal pull up. So that means if the, the pin is floating, it'll be pulled high. I then attach interrupt, and this is a standard Arduino interrupt function. I say the pin, which is A1, I feed in there. I, I call the same interrupt service routine function that I do with the alarm. 
So it'll turn the LED on. I then say, you know, trigger the interrupt once a low level is felt on the, uh, the external pin A1. Now, you know, if you're familiar with the attach interrupt function, if you go to the Arduino page for this, you can do high, you could do rising edge, falling edge, or change in level. So there's different ways you can choose to trigger the interrupt. Then I'm not using this function, but I just put it here just for your reference. So this is what's actually happening underneath the hood when they call the, uh, the standby mode function. Basically is using you know, lower level stuff from the Atmel software framework library, which you can look up. And then it calls this function right here, wait for interrupt. So here I should say we set it to standby mode, which is deep sleep. Here, this is where we actually put it to sleep with this WFI, which stands for wait for interrupt. Certain note on that function, that is actually an ARM architecture function. So you won't find this function in the Atmel documentation, or at least it'll be buried in the Atmel documentation. But if you go to the ARM community, you know this is a function that, that ARM uses for a lot of its architecture microcontrollers. Okay, that was a mouthful to explain the code. We're not quite done. I do want to show you this thing, and we'll, we'll see the example in, in PowerDraw. But what I did was I went into the real-time clock zero library and saw that they were using the, the little higher power but more accurate 32K external clock, and they did that once again to get better accuracy. But I changed it in my own local version of the library to the lower power internal 32K clock. So I'm just gonna show you the library file that I did and where I did the changes. Now, if you don't wanna worry about this, you don't have to, you just use this, uh, this one and you'll, you'll call the real-time clock library. But if you wanna look a little under the hood, we go here. So this is the .cpp file, so this is C++. And the changes that I made was they call this begin function. So this is what you call to start the real-time clock. And it does some initial setups. Once again, this is using registers to turn on uh, the real-time clock. Then there's this configure 32K oscillator. I commented this out. So in the real library, it's not commented out. And this is what configures the clock that, that's default, but I didn't want to use it. So I don't need that anymore. And I don't really need to configure the clock I want to use because it's always on. So if we go down here, here's the other change I made. So here we're basically using this generic clock control. And I think I show this in other, uh, in other of my videos, like my pulse width modulation one. But basically you have to set up a clock to feed to the real-time clock peripheral. Here they specify, they did have this clock specified, the external 32K one. I changed it to this the low power 32K internal clock. So those are the two changes I made. I just commented out the configure for, for the uh, external clock and then I changed this line to the low power clock versus the, the other one. So next what we're gonna look at is a comparison of the power save from the two different clocks. And then later on we'll look at an example of, of the sleep in action. Okay, here's two screenshots from my Great Keysight power supply, the N6705B DC power analyzer. What's nice about this is I've shown this in other videos, but it's a power supply, but it has very accurate measurement capabilities to measure its output voltage and current. So I'm gonna use this to show the difference in power savings between the external 32K and the internal one. And so here's using the external one. This is the default one the real-time clock library uses. And once again, it uses that one because it's more accurate. But we're drawing about 580 microamps. Now, once again, a lot of this hundreds of microamps is due to other stuff around the SAMD chip. So don't take this as the lowest power you can get. But what I want to show is this is 580 microamps. The chip's asleep. So what happened is you know, it turned on, we went through the timer, we set the alarm, and then it went to sleep. And that's the current you're seeing right here. Then with the low power clock, the same setup, the same code, we're getting about 10 microamps less. So if you think about the chip itself, if we're able to get down to five or 20 microamps or something like that, 10 microamps difference is a big deal if, if you're trying to run a battery powered device for a long period of time. 
But once again, the trade-off is accuracy versus power, but I just wanted to show that. All right, next I'm gonna show using the inter external interrupt pin in action uh, while measuring the current. Okay, what you're seeing is my Maker 1000, and I'm powering it. This is the DC power analyzer that I mentioned earlier that can, it basically can output power from these channels you know, based on whatever you set the voltage to be, but it also measures that output. And I have these wires going straight to VCC. The reason I'm doing that is I don't wanna measure the loss due to the power conversion. So I have it routed right to VCC. This other green wire is gonna serve as my interrupt wire. So pin A1 is somewhere over here. I'm gonna use this, which is tied to ground, to bring pin A1 low when I wanna trigger the interrupt. Once again, it's simulating some kind of external event. So we're zooming in. I'm just going to show the Maker 1000. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this on. So I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but the, the power supply is configured to log the measurement. So it's going to log a measurement every millisecond, and we'll be able to see on the screen that the current go up then go down when we go to sleep, and then go back up when the interrupt is triggered. So what I'm doing is I'm starting the data logger. I press this run stop button. Then I turn on the power. So now we can see the voltage and the current ramp up and go high. So what happened here is once I turned this on, this started recording the output voltage and current from, that, from those uh, output terminals that's going to the, uh, the SAMD chip or I should say the Maker 1000 board. So once I press power on, the voltage ramped up and then the current ramped up. And I believe we're looking at about five milli milliamps per division. So this is time on the x-axis and amplitude on the y-axis. So each one of these is about five milliamps. So we see the current ramp up. And remember, there's a five second delay. So we should expect to see normal current draw for five seconds. Then here, is where we went to sleep. So the voltage is the same. We're in normal mode for about five seconds. We went to sleep. So now here's our sleep current. So we're drawing very little current. Now I'm gonna trigger the interrupt. So I got this, I bring pin A1 to ground. Notice right here, this light turned on, which would we expect, because that's what happens once the interrupt is triggered. The interrupt service routine is called and it turns on the LED. Now if we look at the current draw, we can see what we expect to see. Basically the current ramp back up. And so we were normal current, we went to sleep. Notice though the current's about five milliamps higher. That's because we turned on the LED. So the LED is drawing about five milliamps. But I just wanna kinda of show you the profile so you can kinda of see what's happening internally that you know I'm not making this up. We actually are gaining these, these current advantages when we, when we go to sleep. Okay, that's it for part one. I do want to mention that I sell Maker 1000 boards at forcetronics.com, so check that out if you're interested in purchasing one. And I'll see you back here for part two where we get into some more advanced features to save power with the SAMD21. Thank you for watching.